Since the 19th century, it has been known that staining for histology shrinks and distorts cells. We took advantage of the technique devised by the Swedish neurobiologist Holger Huden to dissect out by hand single medullary brain cells from rabbits. We photographed the same cells at each stage of three of the best known staining procedures used in neurohistology and pathology laboratories throughout the world. The standard procedures were, firstly, hematoxylin and eosin, secondly, palm grain silver stain, which is used for nervous tissue, and thirdly, glutaraldehyde fixation and osmic acid staining as used in transmission electron microscopy. Here we see the two unfixed cell bodies filling a large part of the screen. They are fixed with formalin and we have outlined the original cells to view this shrinkage. We will soon see the solution coming in from the left and the uh, shrinkage is gradual but quite perceptible. Although these photographs have been taken in real time, they have been edited to show the important points. Here we're focusing. And we then proceed to the 70 to 100% ethanol to dehydrate the cells, but this has been left out in the editing. Here we see the cells now in 100% ethanol being completely dehydrated. And as we watch them, we will next add the xylene to replace the 100% ethanol. Refocusing. Refocusing again. Now we see the xylol which replaces the ethanol and makes the cells rather difficult to see for a brief period. We have not embedded the cells in paraffin wax as is usual because they could not be seen in the wax and we could not withdraw it from the chamber. But we then proceed therefore from the xylene which we see here back to the ethanols from 100% down 70% back to an aqueous solution. Here we see the ethanol replacing the xylene. Once again, the shrinkage is considerable. We are refocusing and the next stage consists of rehydration and then we stain with hemotoxylin which makes the cells go reddish. We have now changed from phase contrast microscopy to bright field illumination during the staining with hematoxylin. The hematoxylin is now being washed out and we will shortly see the staining with eosin. The wave of eosin is coming in from the left as the whole background goes orange. there is a precipitate formed which is gradually washed away from left to right. Now we are washing off the eosin and it is going away from right to left. A piece of debris stained with hematoxylin has arrived as we dehydrate the cells in ethanol and through xylol which we are editing out and finally we embed in DPX. We'll very shortly compare this appearance, please look very carefully, 
with the original appearance of the two same neurons. The palm grain procedure was then examined in a similar way. Here is another unfixed rabbit neuron. Once again, we add formal saline to fix the cell. Here you see it coming in from the left. And there is a slight shrinkage. The shrinkage is now almost complete and we proceed to dehydrate the cell by going through the ethanols up to a hundred percent ethanol. The contrast gets very poor at this stage and we add xylene and there is further shrinkage indicated by comparing the image seen now with the drawing on the surface of the original cell. Here we see the xylene now being replaced by a hundred percent ethanol again and we begin to rehydrate the cell again up to distilled water. It becomes clear that the cells do not reflate after the dehydration with ethanol. We then add silver nitrate as can be seen here and it makes the cell go grey-brown. The dendrites become much easier and clearer to see, but they're rather shrunk. We then wash off the silver nitrate and refocus the cell. Pyrogallol is added to reduce the silver nitrate. And that produces very little effect except ultimately to increase the contrast of the cell. and the gold chloride is added to tone it. Here we can see the gold spreading from right to left across the cell and it gives a slight bluish tint to the cell body. The cell is then dehydrated first with the alcohols up to 100%. The shrinkage continues. When the xylene is added there is a further considerable shrinkage 
and perturbation of the fluid around the cell which goes out of focus. There are several shots of us here trying to refocus it. We now add DPX to embed the cell body and we can draw the outline of the cell as it now appears. This is compared with the original shape and dimensions of the same cell body. The shrinkage with palm grain stain in a number of cells turned out to be to about 20% of the original area of the, the same cell. Finally, let us look by phase contrast microscopy at the effect of osmic acid staining as is done for electron microscopy. Here is the unfixed cell. Now we add the fixative, which is glutaraldehyde, and you see a considerable shrinkage as a solution comes from the left side to the right side. The excess glutaraldehyde is washed off, and you see the cacodylate buffer going from right to left. We then stain with 2% osmic acid and the cell body gradually becomes yellow. The cacodylate is used to wash off the excess osmic acid stain. and we begin the process of dehydration. We start with 70% ethanol, 90% ethanol, and 100% ethanol. And at each stage, there is more shrinkage and some movement of the cell body itself. The shrinkage jerks a bit. Next, we add propylene oxide, which makes the solution go cloudy and is to replace the 100% ethanol. There is considerable further shrinkage in this medium, and this will require us shortly to refocus the cell body to see its maximum diameter again. We now embed in EPON and watch the cell in phase contrast and then we change the uh, microscopy to see it by bright field illumination. The cell body can be seen to continue to shrink and apparently move in the embedding in EPON due to the exchange of solutions. As before, we now compare this stained cell body with its original size and shape. 
With osmic acid staining, the shrinkage in a large number of cell bodies was to an average of only 14% of their original areas. We have analyzed many such experiments and we have concluded that with all procedures, the main shrinkages and distortions occur during three phases. These are, firstly, the fixation, secondly, the dehydration, and finally, the embedding stages. These observations probably apply to fixation and dehydration in all histological and electron microscopical procedures. Dissect out by hand single medullary brain cells from rabbits. We photograph the same cells at each stage of three of the best known staining procedures used in neurohistology and pathology laboratories throughout the world. The standard procedures were, firstly, hematoxylin and eosin, secondly, palm grain silver. We have outlined the original cells to view this shrinkage. We will soon see the solution coming in from the left and the uh, shrinkage is gradual but quite perceptible. Although these photographs have been taken in real time, they have been edited to show the important points. Here we have stain, which is used for nervous tissue, and thirdly, glutaraldehyde fixation and osmic acid staining as used in transmission electron microscopy. Here we see the two unfixed cell bodies filling a large part of the screen. They are fixed with formalin and focusing. And we then proceed to the 70 to 100% ethanol to dehydrate the cells, but this has been left out in the editing. Here we see the cells now in 100% ethanol being completely dehydrated. Since the 19th century, it has been known that staining for histology shrinks and distorts cells. We took advantage of the technique devised by the Swedish neurobiologist Holger Huden to 